Live and on demand from the WNY News Now studios in downtown Jamestown, this is WNY News Now. And thanks for joining us for WNY News Now on this Wednesday. I'm Justin Gould. Our Matt Hummel is on assignment. Happening now, an Erie County woman allegedly assaults a Cattaraugus County Sheriff's deputies. Details on that coming up. Plus, Dunkirk police are looking for a wanted man in connection with a shooting last month. But first, we get a check of our forecast. Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter standing by for us live. Hey, Dakota. Hey, Justin, and happy Wednesday, Day, everybody. And uh, we're about halfway through the week. Here's a live look from the Doubletree Sky Vision camera downtown Jamestown. Not a whole lot of sunshine. You can see the clouds really just kind of socked in downtown. And, uh, of course, um, of course, all the big buildings downtown. There's the Comedy Center and, of course, the Washington Street Bridge right there. Let's go to Links 1, and we'll take a look at the radar, and we'll show you that there is... Really nothing. Now, what's actually happening up here off Lake Ontario is a little bit of lake effect snow flurries, but they're very light, but they're actually mainly impacting the Lake Ontario shoreline communities. They will not reach down here, and that is the good news. The majority of the day will be dry. So here's the forecast for today, partly to mostly cloudy on average. There is a chance that the sunshine will break apart later in the day, leading to some sunshine like late in the day. We're talking probably about five or six o'clock, and, uh, and it's not as warm today either. 42 to 48, that's below average, with a northwest wind averaging around five to 10. We'll time out the next rain chances, plus some thunderstorms on Friday. Could be gusty. We'll talk about it with that Brotherhood Property Maintenance 7 Day in just a few minutes. Justin? All right. Please Looking forward to that. Dakota, thank you. Our top story happening right the now. The annexation numbers, case involving a piece of property of the Board of Public Utilities property in the town of Ellicott and village of Falconer is having its day in court right now. The New York State's fourth appellate Supreme Court in Rochester is hearing arguments involving the proposed annexation of the Board of Public Utilities Dow Street substation property with a decision expected by the end of the month or in early May. Now, in 2017, the Jamestown City Council voted to annex the property, claiming the city had a right to annex it because a portion of it is adjacent to the city line. Meanwhile, Falconer, Ellicott, and the Falconer Central School District objected the proposal, the trio saying a major loss of tax revenue would occur. As a result, the dispute has to be settled in court. Now, since the legal battle began, all groups involved have reportedly dished out thousands in legal fees. And you can watch the arguments live on the court's YouTube page for a link to that. Head to our website, wnynewsnow.com, and check out our mobile app. An Erie County woman is charged after she allegedly struck a Cattaraugus County Sheriff's deputy with handcuffs last Wednesday. The Sheriff's Office says deputies responded to an accident on Route 417 in the town of Allegheny. 24-year-old Christian Kennedy of Lordston allegedly drove while intoxicated. While Kennedy was being taken into custody, police uh, uh, have charged her with DWI, uh, in that case, Kennedy removed her handcuffs and wrapped them around her hand before allegedly striking the deputy. Now, Kennedy was placed into the back, uh, into uh, was uh, placed back into custody following a short struggle. There, she is charged with DWI, aggravated DWI, moving from lane unsafely, and second degree assault. Kennedy was arraigned and remanded to Cattaraugus County Jail on twenty-five thousand dollars cash or $50,000 property bond. The deputy reportedly received treatment for facial lacerations. In the city of Dunkirk, police are asking for the public's help in finding a wanted man. 39-year-old Jeremy Tolver is wanted on a felony weapons warrant in connection with a March 22nd shooting at Hollis Hotel in Dunkirk. Anyone with information on that case is asked to contact Dunkirk Police at 716-366-2266 or call their confidential tip line at 716-363-0313. The number again is uh, 363-0313. And more than 10 mulch fires in the past two weeks have the Olean Police Department and firefighters there asking residents to stop tossing cigarette butts out of their car windows. 
According to police, these cigarette butts are mixing with the mulch, causing the fires. Now, they've been popping up in medians of downtown Olean on North Union Street. Officials say they're tr tying up vital resources and putting out fires that can easily be avoided in the first place, and they be plan to start handing out fines. City police will be actively enforcing this in the coming weeks. Back here in Jamestown, the South Main Street Bridge will be closed next Monday for more construction. The roadway between Harrison and First Streets will be closed for approximately two weeks. County officials says crews will finish the top course asphalt paving surface, install a crosswalk for the Riverwalk Trail, roadway stripping, and remaining landscaping there. Work has already started with the installation of a capstone on the bridge walls. Now next week, the work will consist of adjusting manhole covers and utility risers along with some miscellaneous uh, milling there. The work is being done in preparation for paving. The following week, sidewalks will remain open to pedestrian traffic during the road closure. Well, happy Wednesday to all of you. Thanks so much uh, for joining us here on WNY News Now. Good uh, afternoon to Samantha. Hopefully you're doing well. Good afternoon to Thomas. Uh, Connie, hello. Uh, David, uh, great to see you. And uh, Seth is here. Uh, Connie has joined us. Alberta. Uh, it looks like Nancy is watching from a train. Well, that's pretty cool. Thanks for tuning in. Um, in Oregon, are you on vacation there? Because... Uh, Boy, that seems like that'd be a pretty cool place to be in spring. Um, and Adam, good afternoon to you. Mike joining us as well. Hello, hello, hello. Um, and David, you're right. Is that girl in some trouble? Certainly. Uh, strike, allegedly striking a deputy, I'm sure, uh, uh, isn't going to help reduce her charges anyway. So um, our, our producers want me to take a moment and uh, just remind everyone, if you uh, are, are Matt Hummel, the reason he's not in studio with me today is he is monitoring the annexation oral arguments that are taking place right now in Rochester at the appellate Supreme Court there. Um, the arguments are being heard from uh, the city of Jamestown uh, right now, and uh, the other sides will be able to uh, voice their piece as well. Um, the court tells us that there could be a decision either later this week or more likely in May. Matt will have a full story on WNYNewsNow.com uh, detailing the arguments today and uh, what has transpired. Well, coming up, a committee votes down discounted college tuition here in New York State. Who will be affected? Coming up. But first, Congressman Tom Reed discusses net neutrality and a bill that will be heard in Congress later this week. Dakota. And the high yesterday was 55 degrees. That's right at average, but that was an early morning high. Temperatures fell through the 40s through the afternoon. Remember 2011? 75 is the record high. No 70s in our immediate future. News Now at Noon continues in just a minute, so stay with us. Live and on demand, you're watching WNY News Now. When I'm streaming and I'm talking to my community, we have that literally split second uh, interaction. If somebody says hello, I say hello right back immediately. And it kind of creates that, that connection because like my subscribers and my followers we pretty much go by Reup's Army. All the hate and everything that goes around, that's kind of like our, our mission statement. It's just like, just be positive and enjoy each other's time. It's more or less just trying to use the internet in a positive way. Like we all from around the world get to connect on a the same level, which is, you know, we all love video games. Mixer.com forward slash Reup. I'm live every single day, 8 p.m. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvanna Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer, plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. Happening now, Congressman Tom Reed says the House will hear a bill that would have the government take over the Internet. Reed says the Democrats are labeling the bill as net neutrality, but the congressman says that they're trying to regulate the Internet more. 
uh, I believe in uh, open and free Internet. I believe in having access uh, to the Internet uh, across the entire country, in particular in rural areas. And taking this heavy-handed approach to regulating the Internet by government control will will uh, decrease the uh, innovation uh, of the Internet as well as decrease the likelihood of the ability of the Internet providers and the Internet industry to expand access into our rural communities. Now, Reed says the innovation of the Internet will decrease if the bill's passed. The congressman adds that the Internet should be treated with a 2019 approach to rules uh, wise with a, quote, 1930s utility regarding government, instead of a, quote, 1930s utility regarding government control. Well, New York State's Assembly Committee for Higher Education has voted down legislation that would have offered discounted college tuition, room, and board for veterans' families. The proposal would apply to dependents of military service members who died in the line of duty and attend SUNY or CUNY institutions. On Tuesday, the committee voted 15 to 11 to hold the bill, ultimately ensuring that it would not make it to the assembly floor this voting session. Now, last week, New York lawmakers passed a $27 million uh, bill to provide tuition aid for undocumented immigrants. And New York State Governor Andrew Cuomo said he would sign legislation allowing people with a terminal illness to seek life-ending med- medication from a physician. On Tuesday, Cuomo said that he knows the topic is difficult for many people and that his support would depend on the details of the law. Now, furthermore, he said it's an issue that elected leaders should address. Legislation would also require two doctors to sign off and the use of life-ending medication has been introduced for years in Albany but has not received a vote. Seven states, Washington, D.C., have already allowed people to seek a doctor's help in ending their life. Lawmakers in New Jersey passed a similar measure last month, but the governor there says he's expected to sign it. And keeping our skin healthy and happy in the sun is a must for everyone, especially when it comes to the skin on our face. Sun damage can cause permanent spots, wrinkles, and even cancer. In today's Health Minute, Meredith Wood shares a couple of tips on how we can treat our faces right. The sun is coming out and the weather is slowly starting to warm up, which means most of us will be spending more time outside. So keeping our skin safe and healthy will once again be on our minds. Tiffany Bianchi, a clinical esthetician at Skin Remedy in Atlanta, says you should start two weeks before prolonged sun exposure with a low-grade peel. The peel she's receiving is perfect for going into spring or summertime because it's not going to cause serious shedding or peeling. It's going to be more cellular, so she will glow without having having actual flaking on the skin. Bianchi says peels help to keep any scarring or pigmentation you already have from deepening into layers of the skin. The other steps in keeping your skin happy in the sun? Hydration, hydration, hydration. Uh, And then my fourth one is sun protection. Applying sunscreen to moisturize skin helps it go on evenly and prevents it from flaking. Her last suggestion, steer away from using heavier moisturizers in the warmer months. Those are going to cause congestion. They're going to get trapped in your pores. You're going to have a lot of bacteria build up, but really focusing on using serums to penetrate into the skin and to keep the skin hydrated. For today's Health Minute, I'm Meredith Wood. All right, Meredith, thank you very much. Hydration, hydration, hydration. Certainly sounds important. Probably not the same as drinking water, though. Um, Hello to uh, Amber. Thank you so much for joining us. Andrew, great to see you as well. Um, uh, Good afternoon to Mike and to Seth. And uh, it looks like Jill is here. Hello to all of you. Hopefully you are doing well, and uh, I really could use more sunshine, let me tell you, because it is kind of chilly. I don't, I don't know if they, they, they must have the air conditioner on in here, which is crazy to me, but it's cold right here in the studio. So um, coming up next, Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter, he's got some splaining to do weather-wise. When will we truly warm up? He has the details in his seven-day forecast. And later, Jamestown High School will host its 40th annual Battle of the Classes. What local group will be benefiting 
as WNY News Now continues. Turn to Brotherhood Property Maintenance for all your lawn care and landscaping needs no matter the season. Brotherhood Property Maintenance does it all from professional plowing during the winter months to expert landscaping all summer long. Count on Brotherhood Property Maintenance for mowing, landscaping, tree work, spring and fall cleanup, plus snow removal. Serving both commercial and residential lots, check out Jamestown's fastest growing landscaping crew on Facebook or call us right now book an appointment with coverage that matters this is wny news now now open in downtown jamestown pearl city hops restaurant and tavern i have some real old-timey dishes on there that i'm just giving new life to like there's a shepherd's pie on there that's going to have some bison in it you know real thick hearty gravy um, then i'm also doing beer flights we're pairing it with a set of sliders a set of tacos and a set of mini rolls. So everything's gonna have its own pair so you can get a taste of a little bit of everything and all the beers. We don't wanna be known as the restaurant in the hotel. We wanna be known as Pearl City Hops. First Defense Weather, the Southern Tier's only live and local weather source. Now, here's Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter. Lucy, you got some splaining to do. Uh, let's take a look at the peak wind gusts from yesterday. This was at the airport. 32 miles per hour was the peak wind gust yesterday. And, uh, you know, if you stepped outside, you might have had the wind blowing in your hair a little bit. Yeah, that was the peak wind gust yesterday. And uh, the high temperatures yesterday, a lot of these occurred early in the day. Uh, the temperatures throughout the afternoon slipped through the 40s. So, again, the official high at Jamestown yesterday was 55. That was a morning high. 60 in Dunkirk, 61 in Erie, and uh, 54 in Olean. So, a lot of these were early morning highs, but uh, who cares? It felt good because that's actually right around average for this time of the year. And uh, the temperature trend, we're going to get another shot of mild air tomorrow and Friday as a warm front pushes in. But along with that front, the winds really start to tick up Thursday night going into Friday. Uh, there may be some sort of a watch or warning issued uh, for Thursday night going into Friday. It's not definite at this point, but that's something that we're keeping an eye on. News now, Cam, a lot of gray skies out there, but currently the temperature is 34. That's way below average uh, right Right now with a north wind to 10 that's the reason why because we have a northerly wind component that drags in the colder air from canada so the wind chills down to 26 degrees let's take a look at first defense doppler the live sweep it's scanning the sky for you showing you absolutely nothing again minus these little light uh flurries up here near the lake ontario shoreline that's not going to impact us, and it's not going to be that big of a deal. The Northeast is pretty quiet, but peek back here because this is the next big deal that you're going to hear a lot about. You're going to hear a lot of stuff about uh, this bomb cyclone or bombogenesis. This is a developing blizzard out here. Nothing new, folks. Uh, this is not nothing new uh, with weather. Um, I don't want to say this happens every year, but it's very common, especially the southern diving blizzards out here. It's, it's quite common, so it's nothing new. Just wanted to let you know on that. Here we go with future scan. You can see the day will be dry. Now, as we get into tonight, there is the chance for some light rain showers that may mix with a few wet snowflakes by early tomorrow morning. However, I think this model is way overdoing a lot of it. I don't think it's gonna look exactly like this, but there will be the chance for a few rain showers early tomorrow morning. And then as we go through the afternoon, it'll be dry. And then here comes the rain that comes Thursday night into Friday that is associated with that warm front. And talking about warmer temperatures, if you're looking for long-term warmth, you're gonna have to wait a little bit. Uh, it looks like as we go all the way out to almost uh, the end of April, it looks like that uh, we have an equal chance for, for possibly seeing near average temperatures as we go through the end of the month. So if you're looking for that long-term warmth, wait just a little bit. We'll see if we get it. We'll go zone by zone for you. We'll start in the eastern areas first. Again, temperatures way below average. We should be near 55 and nobody is going to be hitting that. Again, there is the chance as we go through the afternoon, the clouds will break leading to some uh, sunshine late in the day. Lake Erie shoreline lower to mid 40s. We'll do it here. Now, here comes the future. 
Power of a Brotherhood Property Maintenance. There we go. We go into the 60s on Friday. There is a chance for a strong or severe thunderstorm Friday. We're not in an organized risk by the Storm Prediction Center, but that's something we're going to keep an eye on along with those winds. It turns windy once again on Monday as temperatures go back down into the 40s. Sports is next. Don't go away. Invest in your business or cause by letting the marketing gurus at WNY News Now and WNY Media Company grow your business. Purchase an ad much like the one you are watching now on WNY News Now's daily show, News Now at Noon, WNYNewsNow.com, or our brand new mobile app. And then get feedback from our marketing experts and fans alike. And finally, watch your business grow. As an added bonus, Community Partners messages were run not only on our scheduled programming, but on weather alerts and breaking news as well. Plus, messages are shared on WNY Sports Now programming. Anything from a live local basketball game to the Phone Zone Sports Desk. Become part of our family today. And contact us right now. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. WNY Sports Now is powered by Phone Zone of Jamestown. With the largest inventory around, we buy and sell our own merchandise at a price that can't be beat. Have a broken screen? We'll fix it. Learn more at phonezoneshop.com. Happy Hump Day, sports fans, and welcome back to WNY News Now. I'm Norm Rodriguez with a look at sports. This afternoon at 4.30, the Falconer Golden Falcons varsity baseball team will be on the road for a conference game against the Dunkirk Marauders. Falconer is off to a 3-0 start, winning their last game on Monday 13-3 against Casadega. It will be the first of back-to-back -back games Falconer will have. They'll be on the road again tomorrow at 4.30 against Brockton. Also happening this afternoon at 3.30, the Jamestown Red Raiders boys golf team will be on the road against the Salamanca Warriors. The competition will be played at the Elkdale Country Club in Salamanca. The Jamestown boys golf team also have another game tomorrow at 3.30 against Maple Grove. With the NHL regular season over, the road to the Stanley Cup playoffs starts tonight. 16 teams are left in contention, but only one can win the Stanley Cup. Five playoff games will be played tonight between the times of 7 p.m. and 10.30 p.m. One of the games happening tonight will be the Pittsburgh Penguins on the road against the New York Islanders in Game 1 of an Eastern Conference playoff game. Another playoff series that you should keep an eye on, the Tampa Bay Lightning, who had the most wins in the NHL this season, will be taking on the Columbus Blue Jackets in a best-of-seven series. All the NHL playoff games can be viewed on the NHL app. That's it for sports today. Justin, back to you. All right, thank you as always, Norm. Well, the 40th annual Jamestown High School Battle of the Classes fundraiser to benefit the Child Advocacy Program is set for next week. School officials in a news release today said the battle will take place on Wednesday, April 17th at 6.30 p.m. at the McElrath Gymnasium. Now, this year, students will donate all proceeds to the Child Advocacy Program. It is the 40th anniversary of the Battle of the Classes, which will be recognized at the battle with comments from original class advisors Carolyn Whitehead and Aileen Burgum. Now, this event is open to the public with admission of $1 if tickets are purchased in advance for many students, and it's $2 at the door at the night of the game. Woohoo! 
Pretty cool. So uh, yes. uh, always great to see. There's so much energy mm -hmm. at these types of things. I've, I've gone when I was at JHS. I mean, you know, battle is, you know, I think it's something that I think everybody looks forward to to yeah. the end of the year because yeah. it is so much fun. And, um, of course, nobody beats the class of 2012, folks. Right. I'm sorry. Back-to-back <laughs> -to -back battle champions, <laughs> junior year, senior year, and the best class advisors, Tuccio and Robert. I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. <laughs> but you know what? It's, it's really cool to see how much and how hard they work mm -hmm. to benefit some of these great organizations. Yeah. I know that the video we were rolling was from when they benefited Cali's Crusade, mm -hmm. which was, I think, two and, or three uh, years ago. Yeah, it was about three years yeah. ago. I think, and, yeah, and, um, you know, in, in each year since, and in, mm -hmm. in the past as well, they, they've done a lot of yep. great... With Penny Wars, companies. too. Yep. Yeah. Penny yeah. Wars is, you know... I think Penny Wars is sort of like the fast lane to WrestleMania. If you're like a wrestling fan, you'll catch that because fast lane is what starts the WrestleMania season. So Penny Wars starts the battle season. Okay. I'm sorry. I, if you went to JHS, you'll I, understand. And you have to watch wrestling also. To yeah, so that too. I think that pool went from like here, if you go to JHS, to watch wrestling and go to JHS is probably like. Yeah, about like. Dakota that. and two other people. <laughs> I don't know. Mr. Soul, anybody? Let, let us know. Uh, let's take a look at uh, weather. Uh, let's get off this. And uh, I wanted to show you once again Bombogenesis. Uh, now, again, it's nothing new, but this is a developing blizzard out in the Northeast. Late season storm. It's not going to impact us. That's the good news, but that is a big time deal out there. Brotherhood Property Maintenance seven day. Hey, we make it to 68 once again on Friday. Chance for a few thunderstorms. Some of them could be strong to gusty with those gusty winds and yeah, temperatures fall back down to the 40s for next week. Oh, well, hey, you know what? Uh, I'll take that 68. I I'd love it to be a 70. Well, uh, we'll get there. So Friday, we have you know a little bit of storms, but nothing too severe probably. Um, some of the early data coming back suggests that it's a very, very small chance, but that's okay. something that we're going to keep an eye on as we go throughout the next 48 hours. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks, Dakota. You're welcome. As always, uh, news continues 24-7 on WNYnewsnow.com, and make sure you download that mobile app. Uh, search it up right now on the Apple uh, App Store mm -hmm. and Google Play Store. I got it right this time. Exactly. <laughs> it's the best app you can have on your yeah, phone, folks. Yeah, it, it really is. It really is. It's an you know, incredible source to get local news mm -hmm. and to get local news right now, which I exactly. think is the, you know, the whole point of the app is scroll through the headlines you want, and then anytime we have a big story or breaking news, and mm -hmm. they come right to you. Really, you can't get that anywhere else. That no, I you can't. No. I don't think so. so okay. It's another exclusive, folks. Yeah, there you go. We're full of exclusives. <laughs> hey, uh, remember right now, the annexation battle uh, between Jamestown, the village of Falconer, town of Ellicott, and Falconer Central School is happening in court. Our Matt Hummel is monitoring that live. He'll have full details on WNYNewsNow.com, the mobile app, and you can watch live on the Appellate's uh, uh, YouTube page. We have a link to that on a story right now. Here is, uh, we leave you with a live look of downtown at Jamestown, cars and a bird <laughs> are Ooh. flying by. Um, enjoy the day. We'll see you here tomorrow. See you tomorrow.